Things are chugging along nicely at this point. We have a work breakdown structure and activity list, we've got an estimation of their durations and we stuck some buffers on to cover our backs. Wow, way to go. But things do look a bit like an activity soup right now. We need to unjumble this mess and see how activities link with each other. In other words, we need to understand their dependencies. It's not hard to imagine how some tasks are dependent on others. You can't have the cars delivered without a showroom. And you can't build your showroom until you've started digging, and you can't start digging until you have the machinery on site. You can, however, start recruiting the sales team. So, let's look at the four main reasons why dependencies exist between tasks. First, logical dependency. This is just like what I described. You can't put windows in your showroom until you've built walls. Second, we've got resource constraints. Lack of resources can affect the sequencing of tasks. Let's say you have two work packages as part of your showroom project. One for performing a financial comparison between two potential interior designers, and another for preparing a detailed report on travel expenses. But you only have one business analyst and nobody else qualified to perform the tasks. The two tasks cannot be completed simultaneously. Therefore, your business analyst has to finish one before they can start the other. Third, we have external dependencies. These can be anything from building work that needs to be signed off by the city, to paint work that can only be done in good weather. You get it. The activities that are affected by external sources. The fourth are called soft dependencies. These are applied by the project manager themselves and could include things like a task not going forward unless the project manager has checked the previous task. They are called soft dependencies as they are easily amendable due to the fact that the project manager set them in the first place. Now let's have a look at the types of dependencies. Four, again, is the magic number here. First, we have finish to start, where the second task cannot start until the first has finished. The task paint the whole room cannot start until you finish the task by paint. Second, there is finish to finish, where the second task cannot be finished until the first has been finished. The task paint the whole room cannot be finished before task paint the fourth wall is fully finished. Third is start to start, where the second task can only start when the first starts. The task paint the whole room must start, so the task paint the first wall can also start. And lastly, the not as common start to finish, where the second task has to start before the first can finish. Let's step away from the painting examples for this one and imagine the construction site needs 24 hour security. Guard 2's shift must start before Guard 1's shift can finish. This way, there will be no interruption in the surveillance for any thieves to sneak in. As always, the project manager must take all these factors into consideration because any missed dependencies are sure to cause delays and increase costs. Once the project manager has worked out the dependencies, we can apply the critical path method we came across a couple of lessons ago to potentially find out the shortest time in which we can complete the project. So let's look at this next. 